فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم حدائق for them is gardens وأعنابا vineyards are also for them Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he specifically mentioned here عناب عناب here is عنب grapes right but vineyards as they say in English pay attention here brothers why did Allah specifically mention عناب because they say that عناب is one of the things that the Arabs truly loved and it was something وخص العنب لفضله عندهم the reason why he specifically mentioned the عنب is because it was it had a high value to them so here whatever fruit that you may think of is already there and even in a better way. So it was only specified is because according to their standard, this was the best. But if your standard is something different, yours is also there as well. All the fruits that your mind can come with and that which your mind can't come with, they're all going to be in Jannah. This is what's for them. There's no, there's no heat, there's no burning, there's no fire, there's no thirst, there's no... La. These people have the opposite. They have hadaiq, gardens. They have fruits in Jannah that they're drinking and they're eating and they're enjoying themselves. وَلِذَلِكَ The word here, which is hadaiq, is hadiqa. And a hadiqa is that the, the trees and the fruits are so large and so much that they, they're covered within their Jannah. It's like a house for them. The house of Jannah that they're in and the gardens that they're in, it covers them that no one can see them inside. Enjoying themselves. Allah then says, وَكَوَاعِبَ أَتْرَابًا The humans, the desires that the human have, ya ikhwa, is the fam and the farj, right? Our desires is to eat something and sexually desire, right? Those are the two shahwa that we have, right? So in the, food, the, food, the food has already been mentioned. وَلِذَلِكَ Brothers and sisters, pay attention. The Qur'an is so eloquent in the way it speaks. It spoke about fruit and it didn't speak about the food. Why? Because fruit is eaten once you've eaten food. So the Quran is telling you the fruits because the food is, is as though tahsir al hasil. Don't worry, that's already there. You with me? He's talking to you as though you're a full stomach person. Are you with me, brothers? And this is why the Quran's speech is very powerful. Then Allah goes on to the second form of desire that we have, which is sexual desires. Allah tells us. وَكَوَاعِبَ أَتْرَابًا For them in Jannah is wide-eyed women in paradise. The word kawa'ib, as the Mufassirin mentioned, is women whose breasts are rounded and they are not saggy. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah he said that their breasts, it fully stands, that it's like an arrow. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah says. So that's what the word kawa'ib here means. وَأَتْرَابًا here means that the women in paradise, Jannah, are one age. All the women are one age. And one is not bigger than the other. There's not a 60-year-old. All the women, they are very young and they're one age. The beauty of the women are like this. تَدِيُّهُمْ لَمْ يَتَدَلَّى Their breasts have not sagged. Atraban and their age is also the same. They're all the same age. She never grows old. Her body parts don't become weak and loose and saggy. She is intact and her beauty glows. This is what's going to be given to them. So they can eat and they can fulfill their desires. And then Allah says, And for them is cups. Dihaqan here means three views. Cups that are full. The cups that they're drinking is full. That's one view. The second one is al mutatabi'a. The minute they finish the cup and they drink it and they put it down, it gets continuous, it gets filled again. So they pick it up, being continuously filled. The third one is as-safiyah. It's pure cups. The water has been filtered and it's been cleaned for them. Those are the three aqwal regarding what is meant by dihaqan. The first one is an imtila, that it's full. The second one is al mutatabi'a, continuously being filled. And the third view is as safiya that the water that they are drinking is actually it's actually pure. 
Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said, لا يسمعون فيها, they will not hear in it. They will not hear in it. So the Mufassirin differed here. What is it meant by لا يسمعون فيها in it? Uh, there's two views. فيها, they won't hear in it. Some scholars, they said فيها أي في الجنة. And that view stands strong because that's what we were talking about all the time. Another group, group of scholars, they said لا لا لا. The word فيها is, the, is taken the place of a harfu jar, which is ba. And that ba is ba al sababiyya. لا يسمعون بسبب الشرب الخمر Whilst they're drinking their khamr in Jannah They're not going to hear lagwan ولا kidaba In Jannah the people are going to drink alcohol Khamr And the khamr that they're drinking So the fiha has now become a harf al-jar لأن الحروف al-jar ينوب بعضها بعضا The harf al-jar can take each other's places So the fiha here is the ba. So they're saying, whilst they're drinking their alcohol, they are not going to hear lagwan wala kidaba. And when people are drunk, what do they do? They lie and they speak foul language, right? Here, when they're drinking their khamar, which has now become permissible for them, they won't hear, they will not hear, la lagwan wala kidaba. There's few, three views regarding what the word lagwa means. One statement is, they are not going to hear الكلام الذي لا فائدة فيها statement I'm a speech that has no benefit whilst they're in Jannah I'm a whilst they're drinking their khamar they are not going to hear a speech لا فائدة فيه there's no benefit in it everything they hear is full of benefits that's one the second one is they won't hear kalam which is batil speech which is false they're not going to hear that also the third one is lagwan means they're not going to hear insults. Because when a person becomes drunk, what does he do? And he's, ah, he's all over the ah, He starts to insult people, foul language, he can't hold his tongue. None of that is going to happen. That's one view. That's the three views that are there. So the khamar here that they drink and they're having is not one that's going to take their minds that they don't know what they're saying. It's one that doesn't make them like that. Why? Why are they going to receive all of this? Jaza'an min rabbika ata'an hisaba. The reason why they're receiving all of this, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving them this, is in reward from your Lord Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with a sufficient gift. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is rewarding them. He's gifting them with this. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. They worked hard. But even that though they worked hard and they put so much effort in, no one's action is enough to take them to Jannah. The Prophet ﷺ, he said in the hadith, لَن يَدْخُلَ أَحَدُكُمُ الْجَنَّةَ بِعَمَلِهِ None of you will enter Jannah because of his actions. قِيلَ وَلَا أَنْتَ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ Oh Messenger of Allah, even you? قَالَ وَلَا أَنَا Even me. إِلَّا يَتَغَمَّدَنِ اللَّهُ بِرَحْمَةٍ مِنْهُ وَفَضْلًا Except if Allah bestows on me his virtue and his kindness. No one truly deserves because of their actions to enter Jannah. No one does. Because whatever you have come with, whatever Allah has given you in this world is more than what you can ever come with. Just take your eye and just ponder on the blessings that your eyes gives you. That's sufficient enough for the many years that you can come with righteous deeds. That's more than it. Uh, uh, Imam Tirmidhi, I think, narrated in his uh, Sunan that the Prophet وسلم, he said, a slave will be brought the day of judgment whose face has been dragged on this earth. Been dragged on this earth. Mundu an khalaqahu Allah since the day Allah created him. And then he will be brought the day of judgment. And he will stand in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when he stands in front of Allah, he will belittle that which he has put forward. He will belittle that which he has put forward. Well, rather, Allah has angels who he created who were created in the form of prostration. That's how they were created. So they've always been prostrating to Allah. And we all know the angels, They never disobey Allah. They do everything which He instructs, instructs them to do. They are slaves who are very obedient. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us that those angels, the day of judgment, when the trumpet is blown, and those angels, they raise their heads from the prostration, and they lift their heads up, what do they say? 
Subhanallah, ma abadnaka haqqa ibadatik. Exalted you are Allah, we have not worshipped you the way you deserve to be worshipped. These are angels that were always prostrating, they never disobeyed Allah, they were in line of his command, everything he told them. So this is something you as an individual never should arrogance enter your heart and think to yourself, you have worshipped Allah enough to allow him to enter you, to enter you into Jannah. So the Prophet said, even I don't deserve that. Even I, Muhammad ibn Abdullah, don't deserve because of my hard work or because of what I put forward for Allah to take me into Jannah. So why would we enter Jannah, brothers? Because Allah's mercy, Allah's kindness, Allah's generosity was what's going to take us to Jannah. So that's why we will always ask him, Oh Allah, forgive us for our sins and allow us to enter Jannah. Jaza'an min rabbika ata'an hisaba. Then Allah says, Rabbi samawati, the Lord of the samawat. Wal ardi, and the Lord of this earth that we're on today. Wa ma baynahuma, and that which is between it. He's the Lord of all of that. Allah is the Rabb of the samawat. He's the Rabb of this ard. He is the Rabb of everything that he... What does the word Rabb mean? The one who created you. The one who sustains you. The one who provides for you. The one who stands up for your affairs. He is your Rabb of the Samawat. He is the Rabb of this earth. And every single thing that in it are his. He owns them. Man. Between it. Allah says, لا يملكون None of them. None of those people who are in between the Samawat and the Ard. And none of those which are in the Samawat, and none of them which are on this earth, لا يملكون منه خطابا. No one can speak to Allah. No one. The mighty Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one can address him and speak to him. No one. And Allah gives an exception to two types of people. With who, who fulfill these two conditions are the only type of people who can speak to him. The first one is those who he has given permission to. إِلَّا مَنْ أَذِنَ لَهُ الرَّحْمَنِ That's the first one. Allah gives permission. Anyone Allah gives him permission to talk to him, he can speak to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Are you with me, brothers? The second one is, وَرَضِيَ لَهُ قَوْلًا And anybody who Allah is pleased with. Anyone Allah gives him permission, and anyone who Allah is pleased with. Allah is pleased with two types of people. Or he has to be, sorry, pleased with two types of people. The Shafi' and the Mashfu'i lahu. The Shafi' is the intercessor, the one who wants to intercede and speak to Allah. And the one who is being interceded for, both of them Allah has to be pleased with them, not just one. And also Allah has to give permission. Walidalika, brothers and sisters, the day of judgment, look what the Prophet said in the Hadith Sahih Bukhari. I remember I was in Dubai just a, 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 a month ago. And I, this great Shaykh from India, Shaykh Dhafar al Hassan al Vadani. I was reading on him the hadith Bukhari and Muslim both agreed upon. And the scholar is Shaykh. Shaykh Dhafar al Hassan al Vadani is from India. So I met him in Dubai and we were reading a hadith Sahihain Bukhari and Muslim. And we came across this long hadith, the hadith of intercession, where Bukhari and Muslim both narrated it, in the hadith Abu Huraira. And as I was reading on it, the powerful not benefit that the Shaykh pointed out for me, which was that day. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give the Prophet permission. Didn't we say permission has to be given? When Allah gives him permission, do you know what the Prophet said? فَحَدَّدَ لِي Allah restricted for me for what I can intercede for. I'm not even allowed to just speak as I wish. Nabiullah Muhammad, the best man who ever walked on this earth, that day after he prostrates to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and it said to him, Muhammad, ishfa' to shaffa' Ask for intercession, for whoever you ask for intercession will be interceded for. Even he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it will be restricted for him what he can and what he can't. Because he himself that day is a slave. The master is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ghadiba rabbuna, our Lord becomes angry that day. Ghadban and anger, lam yaghdab qablahu. He's never been angry like this before. And he will never ever be angry a day like this ever again. So every a prophet who ever walked on this earth, min ladun Adam alayhi salatu sallam, from Nabiullah Adam, ila Nabiullah Muhammad, everyone is scared. Wa khasha'atil aswa'atu lirrahman, fa la tasma'u illa hamsa. Every sound has become silent that day. You will only hear hams. You know what hams is? Footsteps. No one's talking to no one. That's what it is that day. Allah has control over everything. Where are the kings? Where are the leaders? Where are those who had money? Where are those who used to say, I, I? Where are those who thought they meant something in this world and everything was theirs and their, their, 
their, their mind and their ideas should be taken on board. Where are you today? Nothing. لِمَنِ الْمُلْكُ لِلَّهِ الْوَاحِدِ الْقَهَارِ Kingdom and supreme power is for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ya ikhwa, be a slave to him. The only thing that he's going to give you jannah for is when he sees that you were a slave of his and you submitted. Stop following these ideologies, being a feminist or anything. Nothing's going to help you that day. Wallahi, nothing's going to help you. That day, be a slave. That's the only thing. Being a slave, surrendering to him. All of those groups that misguided you, all of those people who took you off the track, they won't do anything for you, Wallahi. Your own mother who gave birth to you, who never... If you look at a mother today, every criminal, his mom justifies his crime. So true or false? Mom, your mom is the only person who sees you as a good boy. That evil day, even that day, your mother's going to walk away from you. She has her own affairs to deal with that day. So think wise. The only friend that you truly have, brothers and sisters, the only true friend that you have is your actions. That's what I say all the time. Because actions are the only thing that are going to stay with you. لا يملكون منه خطابا. No one is allowed able to address the Allah. ولذلك some of the مفسرين they said the ones that are not able to address Allah are the مشركين. Some scholars say not even the مؤمنين can't address Allah. But the قول which is صواب is أنه عام. The ayah encompasses everyone. The angels, the prophets, everybody. No one's allowed to address Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that day. Because the ayah in the beginning, what does it say? رَبُّ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَمَا بَيْنَهُمَا So it's talking about every creation here. And everything in between it. So the verse is general. Allah then says, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ The day when the ruh stands. وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ And the angels, they stand. صَفًا The angels are going to stand in lines. What does ruh here mean? The ruh here is five aqwa, six views, six views of what is meant by a ruh. Yawma yaqoomu ruhu. The word ruh in this ayah, there is six aqwal of what the Salaf said. Al qawlu al awwal, the first view, is annahu malakun min a'zam al malaika. It's from the one of the greatest angels. There are many great angels, Jibreel, Mikael, Israfi, these are big angels. It's from one of, any, one of those great angels, one. And that call is transmitted from Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, and others. The second one is, that is Jibreel. Allah says, يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحِ The day when Jibreel stands. وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ And the angels stand. That's one call. That's the second call. The third view is, the third call, the third, third statement, and the third, third view is, خَلْقٌ مِّنْ خَلْقِ اللَّهِ It's a creation from the creations of Allah, which are in the form of the children of Adam. They are human beings. They're not humans, but they have the form of the human beings. This view is attributed to Mujahid ibn Jabrin, and it's also attributed to others. The fourth, so the second view I mentioned, which is Jibreel, is attributed to who? Sha'bi al dahak The fourth view here is that is Banu Adam, the children of Adam. And this view is attributed to Hassan al-Basri, Qatar al Da'amat al-Sadusi, and others. The fifth one is, Annahu arwah Bani Adam. It's the souls of the children of Adam. It's the actual soul. Not the body, but the soul. This is attributed to Ibn Abbas. Last but not least, it's the Quran. And they took this from وَكَذَلِكَ أُحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا مِنْ أَمْرِنَا مَا كُنْتَ تَدْلِمَ الْكِتَابِ Ruhan from this verse. They took it from that verse. Uh, which is in Surah Surah Shura, Ayah 50, 52. So وَكَذَلِكَ أُحَيْنَا إِلَيْكَ رُوحًا So they say this one. Which is the strongest of the views? The first view is the strongest, which is one of the greatest angels. The reason why is because Abdullah ibn Abbas and Ibn Mas'ud are two companions and they are talking about something which are the ghaybiyat from the unseen. And the ulama, they say, لا مجال للرأي فيه. It's something they could have not gained through independent reasoning. They must have heard it from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They're talking about unseen. So the ulama, they say, مَوْقُوفُ لَفْضًا مَرْفُوعُ حُكْمًا it takes the ruling as though the Prophet said it alayhi salatu wasalam. So that's what we say. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ الرُّوحُ The day when great angels, they stand. Safan in lines. What does it mean, Safan? There's two views what is meant by Safan. One view is that all of the angels are going to stand in one line. That's one قول. أَنَّهُمْ يَقُومُونَ فَيَصْطَفُونَ Safan wahidan. All the angels, one line. The other one is, أَنَّهُمْ يَصُفُونَ صُفُوفًا عَلَى حَسَبِ مَرَاتِبِهُ وَمَنَازِلِهِمْ That the angels are going to stand in line in accordance to their ranks and their statuses and their positions. 
Some will be here, some will be there. Allah will line them all up like that. This is the day when the master is addressing his creation. Everything is going to come in front of him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. No one's going to run away. No one's going to hide. Even the angels are going to be brought forward. A person needs to be scared and worried. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, here he says, This day is the day of haq. Why did Allah refer to it as the day of haq? Two qawl, two views. The first one is, it's the day of haq. You know why it's the day of haq? Because it's the day, السرائر, the day when the secrets are going to be brought out. What you were hiding in your chest and in your breasts, it will all come out. It will be brought out. What you were hiding and you don't want people to know, it will be brought out in the open. The day when the graves and the people are going to be taken out of the graves and reality are going to be seen. The day when all of the disputes and argumentations that the humans had are going to be brought to the master and the master is going to judge between them. You're right, you're wrong. The baatin and the falsehood is going to perish and the truth is going to stand. That's the true day. That's one view. The second view is ذلك اليوم الحق is الحق في وجوده It is haq in its existence and it is haq in its occurrence, it is going to happen and it is going to occur. It's a day that will happen. Like it or not, agree with it or not, it's going to take place and it's going to be. Then Allah says, فَمَنْ شَاءَ اتَّخَذَ إِلَىٰ رَبِّهِ مَآبًا Whoever wills, let him take that day a good abode with his Lord. Choose your place properly. Pick your place properly. Think of where you want to be. The people that were spoken about in the hellfire and the punishment of the hellfire that was mentioned and the people whose adab were mentioned, you can choose that if you want to. And if you don't and you want to enter the Jannah, then pick your place wisely. Whoever wills, The one who truly wants Jannah, he will pick his place in Jannah. How would he pick his place in Jannah, ya ikhwah? By coming with two things. Al-ilm al-na'fi wa al-amal al-salih. He comes with beneficial knowledge and righteous actions. With those two, he's going to pick his place in Jannah. He's going to pick, pick his place in Jannah. And Allah concludes the surah by saying, Inna anzarnaakum, people, we have warned you. Inna anzarnaakum, we have warned you, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he said. Adab and a punishment. Qariban is very close. This punishment is very, very close. It's going to happen. Yawma yanzuru al-mar'u. The day when the person looks, the mar'u here, the mufassirin, they said it's three people. The first people said, scholars, the first they said, al-mar'u here is the mu'min, the believer. The second is, it is ammu min al-mu'min, it is more general than the mu'min. It's actually the mu'min and the kafir. And the third one is al-kafir. But the strongest is that it's both of them. It's both of them, the mu'min and the kafir. That day, the person is going to look and as we know the believer is going to say what? Let me read my book. I can't wait to see what's inside it. And what would the disbeliever say? Ya laytani kuntu turaba. If only I can be dust. He doesn't want to see his book. He doesn't want his book to be given to him. That's what he wants. And the disbeliever that day will say Ya laytani I only wish if I can be Turab. Turab here means I can be from the dusts. Because what the Kafir sees that day is that the animals are going to be brought. The one that had horns and the one that didn't have horns. Allah is going to judge between them. Brothers and sisters, the animal that has horns that headbutted the other one unjustly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to judge between them two. He's going to say to the one that didn't have horns, he gives him horns and he says, take from him what he do, done, done to you. This is animals who have no aql. Allah is going to judge between the people. What you said about this person, what you did to this person, how you wronged this person. Everybody's going to be judged between them. Once they have what they've judged between them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to each and every one of them, become dust and they become dust. The kafir sees this. So he wants to be like that. He wants to be like the dust, just like the animals are. But all of this is what? A speech that just comes out of his mouth. If only I can be dust that day. And as they say in English, 
the kafir is crying over spilt milk. Something he can't change that day. And the beautiful thing, my brothers and sisters, is that this is an exam that awaits us the day of judgment. And the beauty about it is that we have already been given the answers. If you've got an exam waiting for you, and the answers have been given to you, isn't it so dumb if you fail that exam? Allah told you way and answers and everything that can allow you to enter Jannah. So I say to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, oh Allah allow us to enter Jannah and to be from the inhabitants, inhabitants of Jannah. Anything which I have said that whilst I was coming on, commenting on this surah is from me and shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa tubu